The following video is sponsored by DJI. DJI, we know them for their high quality drones, microphones, action cameras, gimbal cameras, and now this, power stations. This is the Power 1000. So it has a capacity of the 1000 model here of 1024 watt hours. Its maximum AC output is a peak, but very short of 4,400 watts. But its typical is 2,200 watts, and it can go up to 2,600 watts for 60 seconds. It's using LFP cells, so very good chemistry, and they're good for 10 years and around about 4,000 cycles before the capacity drops down to 70%. So this is going to last a very long time. It has Type-C ports on it that can output 140 watts, supporting power delivery 3.1, a UPS as well it can be used as. And when the power cuts out, it'll swap over in around about 0.2 seconds, so incredibly fast. And in this video, I'll be testing out solar charging. I'll even see if it can charge an EV, power tools, and my typical tests that I do for power stations here. And I'll let you know all about the new Power 1000 from DJI. Along with the Power 1000, in the box you will find a quick start guide. We have a warranty card. This is an extended warranty service for it safety guidelines, some DJI stickers, and our AC power cable to charge it. So let me just walk you through what we have in the options here and the build quality, excellent. Typical DJI, it's very good. So the plastics use high quality, no sharp edges, good handles either side, and it can handle 100 kilos, this build to it, so it's really strong. And it weighs 13 kilos, which isn't bad. It's a nice portable size and light enough that it's not going to be too much of an issue to move about with it. So we have the two AC ports. Now to turn those on, you just simply tap. You hear the confirmation beep. You don't have to hold the button down for three seconds or five like some other models out there. So we get 2,200 watts output that I talked about in the intro there. And we do have a very short 60 second peak of both of these to have... 2,600 watts and a combined 4,400 absolute peak, okay? But that is only really for a few seconds, just if there happens to be like a little bit of a surge or something. So the screen is very clear. It can be made out in direct sunlight. We get our percentage here, the remaining time when it's on, if there is something plugged in. For example, I've got a hairdryer on. Well, it'll tell me that I have approximately, say, 15, 20 minutes uh, left use of it from about 62% there because that's 2000 something watts. Your input, your output, all very clear there. And if it does happen to overload, the overload will come up on the screen and it will automatically just turn itself off. That module that is overloaded, say AC is normally the one that, where that's going to happen. Now the power button, when it's already on, you can tap and that will turn the screen off if you didn't want it on. And you can tap again and it will come back on or press and hold, that's gonna turn it off. And that's for a few seconds. And then the same to turn it on. And you hear that little beep, which is kind of similar to the DJI drone beep, a little similar there, you can see why they've done that. So with our charging options, there's 120 watts or 60, there's the switch there. And here you see the typical AC plug. You normally see this for power supply units for PCs. It's a very common cable, so very easy to source a replacement or if you forgot the one that it came with. So on this side here, we have our SDC plugs. There's two of them. So the SDC, SDC Lite, and they've got the same nice high quality covers over them just to keep out dust and muck and things and getting inside them. Now this quality plug here does offer a lot of options because we have for solar inputs, both of them can handle. So 400 watts here, 400 watts on both. And that's a combined 800 watts of solar input. If you were wanting to do that, you've got that option, which is very good. And they can also output here 240 watts, both of them. And this is where you plug in accessories. One of them I'll show you in this video. And let's just get that back plugged in. There's a status LED there too for it. On the left, we have an intake and this does have a dust filter over it, which is great to stop it clogging up with dust. Looking in here, it's just a little hard to see with my camera, but there's a fan and yes, you will hear that, but it's a quiet fan most of the time, very quiet in fact. And when charging super quiet, you don't even really hear it at all. The handles are very well made, super high quality and the plastics, no sharp edges. You'll see there's a couple of quarter threads here and that is for screwing on their accessories. So the back, it's just this nice matte high quality plastic with the DJI logo. So no ports here, they're all on the front. 
Along the top, it's just matte plastic with a DJI logo, and sadly, there is no wireless charging Qi standard wireless pad at the top, which would have been nice, but I guess they just couldn't fit that in there. Another little minor complaint, it doesn't have any Bluetooth support or wireless unless you get this here, which is the power dongle. Now the power dongle, it's very easy just to plug this into the light port. And then when you do that, you can use the DJI Home app and connect up and control it and see everything remotely with Bluetooth or wireless. But I kind of think that this function here should actually be part of our power station itself. For my solar charging test, I'm using this Zygnus panel here that you can get from DJI's website. Now it's not their own brand, but it's one they have and the quality of it seems very good. This is a foldable 100 watt solar panel. The good news is that this panel is using an XT60 connector, so we don't need to get a MC4 to XT60 cable or adapter. But if you're going to be using your own solar panels, which of course you can do, then you will probably still need that right there. And for everything or any solar panel you're going to connect up, you will be needing this, which is that solar panel adapter module. So this is what it looks like when it's set up. It just plugs into the SDC plug here, and then you've got the XT60 plugs. There's three of them. Now in total, it can handle 800 watts, but from each of the ports, it's 400 watts maximum solar input. Now I do have a good day to be testing out these solar panels, so it's up to 100 watts max, and it's clear at the moment. I've had to wait days for this because it's always been so cloudy lately. As you can see, this Zygnus panel is made up of four individual panels there, and that's how they all fold up, so 25 watts each. There are two kickstands to it that does support it really well, and it is stable, and it's not going to blow over with a little bit of light wind. It's a smart idea to keep the Power 1000 out of direct sunlight because it will get hot. It will probably get over the 40 degrees that it can work in, so operating temperatures up to 40 degrees will not be a problem. In direct sunlight, you can imagine it going over that. So the current input is 64, 65, and it's going up again. It's fluctuating. There's a little bit of light cloud coming over at the moment. Now I have seen it peak at 86 watts. I think it's not bad at all. That's very close to the 100 watt claim that this flexible, this foldable solar 100 watt solar panel can do here. Over to a few tests. First up with the garden here. So it's going to work with all your power tools out there, pretty much 99% of them, because it's up to that. 2,200 watts peak, and this line trimmer is around about 600 watts, so it's gonna be perfectly fine. I'm gonna test it now, we'll see how it works. Of course, not an issue at all for our Power 1000. Now, one of those things that has popped up in my other power bank videos is could you use a power station like this, the Power 1000, to charge an EV such as this one here, in an emergency situation that is. Well, let's find out. So it can with this wall box here, which I've set to 10 amps, and that means it's about 2.2 kilowatts. And if I look now at our Power 1000, you can see charging there happily just fine at 2,230 watts. And it's telling me, well, it's got about 20 minutes left. And this in an emergency situation could be enough to get you to the nearest charger. So this will give me probably about five to six kilometers only. And just confirming that with the car, it's also stating the 2.2 kilowatts that it's charging at with the Power 1000. So, so far just charging an EV really pushed it to the limit. But what I'll do now is go back into the studio. This time I'm gonna really load it up, get it discharging and charging at the same time and also test out the UPS performance. So we've seen it can do easily just over 2,200 watts, but what about boiling water here? That's gonna be around 2,000 watts. Then a hairdryer, which will get up to 2,000 watts as well. What I wanna do is trigger our BMS. So we wanna trigger that battery management system. The safety that's on board, now it does have 10 fuses, and each of those modules can cut out when needed. And this of course is all for safety, and it is SGS certified in fact for 26 checks so it's pretty safe a fire retardant material well that they have used for the plastic so that is good but anyway let's just load it up so hair dryer okay 2113 watts not a problem that output right there what i'll do is now trigger 
the cutout for it, so the safety. Start boiling water. Okay, that cut out pretty much straight away because it got up to, well, that would have been about 4,000. I would have demanded more than 4,000 4, watts and that is as expected, so it's good. It's come up on the screen, overload two and error 22. Now to get myself back up and running with the AC side of things, I did have to power it off completely. But that was only a few seconds to do that. And if you wanna know, what I'll do is start boiling water it can boil water. So it's pulling right now 2,140 watts and it will be able to boil water. Trust me, I've done this before. Now we did have, you might've seen the news, a nationwide power card in Spain. We had nine hours with no power. So the Power 1000, it came in really handy. We used it to make ourselves some coffee, boil water, and even use a hairdryer to dry my children's hair after a shower. So it came in really handy, it was perfect timing. And so you can see, you can charge a lot at the same time here. So I've got a Legion Go, an MSI Claw, a Xiaomi 15 Ultra. I also have this, which is my kettle there, now boiling some water again. And I've got my DJI stuff. Now this is DJI stuff that I bought myself here. Action 5 Pro, the Mic 2, and the Osmo Pocket 3. So you can charge a lot. And it's doing it all right now. Perfectly fine AC side and DC side of things. With all this tech charging at the same time and boiling water, just how loud does it get? Well, I'll give you a sample now. It's not bad. It happens to be one of the more quieter power stations that I've covered. Other brands like Blue Tea Eco Flow, they tend to be a bit louder, quite a bit louder than this. Finally, to really push it to the limit, I want to charge it at the same time. Will it be able to handle this? So, the input is, yes, about 2,000 watts at the moment, and the output has dropped off a little, around about 200 watts, but it's doing both at the same time. Sorry about that, cables in the way everywhere. But that's handling it well. Now, we want it to work, of course, as a UPS. So, when I unplug this cable, so the power cuts out. It should only take 0.2 seconds and we'll see if any of the devices do turn off. No, nope. I can still hear the water's boiling, starting to boil. And I didn't notice anything flicky here. So the UPS is working well and it can charge and discharge at the same time around 2000 watts. That's impressive. Now, what about the price? It's 649 euros I've seen on the official website and on Amazon. And I think for the capacity, the output that it does offer, and the spec in general, I think it's a fair price for what is on offer here compared to the competition. It is very good. So super high quality, typical DJI from them product here. Very good here. Passed my test, good output. Could even charge an EV if you keep it to a course within its and then wattage that it wants. So 2.2 maximum, don't really go over that and you will be fine. It will burn through that battery very quickly, of course. It's only gonna be about 30 minutes from fully charged, 25, and it's gone and depleted, which is normal. But in emergency situations, it could give you an extra five, six kilometers to make it to a charger if you happen to need it for that, that is in an EV running out of battery kind of situation. So how many times would it be able to charge your typical kind of devices? Well, my mobile phone about 45 times. A laptop such as this, Windows laptop here, typical Ultrabook, nine times. And at the very demanding kind of loads, like the 2000 watts hair dryer, yeah, you're looking at around again, 25, 20 minutes or so. It all depends on the wattage, but it isn't bad, it's practical. And speaking of being practical, for us at least, here in Spain, we did have the complete nationwide blackout. We had no power for nine hours. I just happened to have received this, so it came to be very handy indeed. We were making ourselves coffee when everyone else had no power, and we could even use hair dryers, boil water, so very practical. So all those appliances out there, 99% of them, you can use them with this, which is great. So it's using LFP cells, another big thumbs up, and we don't know what brand it sells, but I imagine with DJI, they would be a known brand there too. With them, the cooling works on it well. The fan noise is typically very good. Fully charges in 70 minutes, 80% in only 50. 
it really is ticking all boxes apart from two things. I have two very minor complaints with it, and that is no wireless charging on the top of it. It would have been nice, but I know that's not a must for most people, but I think it's handy to have, especially in an emergency situation where you find yourself with maybe just this and no cables. Not that that would normally happen, but hey, it's good to have there. And you need the power dongle if you want the Bluetooth and the wireless support, the app support. I kind of think it should be already built into the machine that most other brands do this. And I hope with the next models that DJI will be able to at least add that support, the app support, the wireless and the Bluetooth to the power station itself. So there we go. That's pretty much everything you need to know there about the new DJI Power 1000. Thanks a lot for watching.